Hello and welcome to Sunday Storytime. Now today's story is one of the great stories of Wales. It is the story of Ceridwen, the witch, and the servant boy, Gwion. And this story comes from this book, The Magic Thief, written by Catherine Fisher. And thanks to Catherine for permission to read this story to you today. In the middle of Wales, there was a lake, a cold, grey lake. In the middle of the lake, there was a castle. In the castle lived the witch, Ceridwen. Ceridwen was so powerful that the grass bowed before her, and the waves drew back before her feet. She lived with her husband and a son called Morvran, which means sea crow, in Welsh. One day she looked at her son and saw how very ugly he was. Look at you, she snapped. You're all hunched up and your nose looks like a beak. What girl is going to want to marry you? Morvran wiped his nose. Then do something about it, mother, he said. You're a witch. Make me look good. Ceridwen went to her study and took out her spell books. The books had dragon skin and spells were written in silver ink. Eyes peeped from between the lines. Bats flitted about in the pages. She looked for a spell to make her son handsome, but none of them would work. They were too weak. Then, at the back of the book, in secret writing, she found the weirdest spell of all. It would not make Morvran good-looking, but it might help him find a wife. I'll use this spell, Ceridwen said. Morvran will be able to sing wonderful songs. He'll be the best bard in Wales. He'll know all the magic spells. He'll be the best sorcerer and wizard. And he'll be able to turn himself into anything he wants. He'll be a shapeshifter. She went on. This spell will make Morvran the greatest bard and sorcerer and shapeshifter in the whole world. Then someone will want to marry him. So Ceridwen set to work. She took her great bronze cooking pot to witch's cauldron. She filled it with cold lake water. She dropped in magic herbs, secret words, and starlight. She set a fire to burn under it. The cauldron grew warm, then hot. The potion began to brew and boil. Ceridwen stood back and rubbed her hands and folded her arms. Now, she said, someone must stir this spell. They must stir and never stop for a year and a day. Who's going to do that? Not me, said her husband. Not me, said Morvran, her son. So she found the smallest servant in the castle and dragged him down to the kitchen. You'll have to do it, she said, and never, ever stop stirring. The servant was a boy called Guion. He took a big wooden spoon and began to stir. He stirred for days and nights. He stirred for weeks and months. He stirred sitting and lying down and kneeling. He stirred when he was awake. He stirred when he was asleep. He stirred twelve spoons to splinters. At last, the year and the day came to an end. Ceridwen came and sat down by the cauldron, watching with her sharp eyes. She knew that when the spell was ready, the potion would bubble, and three, just three, hot drops of magic would splash out. All the power of the spell would be in those drops. 
she was ready to catch them for her son. But as she watched, she felt tired and her head nodded. She fell asleep. Guion gave one last great splosh. Suddenly, the potion bubbled. Before he could jump away, three drops splashed out onto his hand. They were so hot, they burned him. Ouch! he said. He put his hand to his mouth and he licked up the drops. As soon as he did that, he felt the magic go through him like a flash of lightning, like a great cry, like a stab of pain. He saw the future. He saw the past. He saw all of the secrets of the world. He was a bard and a sorcerer and a shapeshifter. And he knew that when Keridon woke up, she would be mad with anger because he had stolen the magic that she'd made for her son. He dropped the spoon. He climbed up the window. He rolled across the lake and he ran. The first thing Keridwen saw when she woke up was the spoon lying on the floor. She opened her eyes wide and gave a screech of anger. Guion was gone. The fire was out. The cauldron had stopped boiling. Keridwen knew what had happened. As she stared, the cauldron cracked and fell. And the rest of the useless spell flowed out across the floor and into the lake. Keridwen jumped up and ran outside. She leapt across the lake in one huge step and raced off after the thief. Guion was running. He ran over hills and valleys, but he saw her coming behind him, like the shadow of a cloud, and he couldn't run fast enough. She was catching up with him. He thought, I'm a shapeshifter now. I must do something. He turned himself into a hare and sped away. Keridwen yelled, You won't get away like that! She turned herself into a greyhound and sped after him. They raced up hills and through forests. Soon Keridwen's teeth were snapping at his heels. But just at that moment, Guion came to a fast-flowing river. He threw himself in. He became a salmon, swimming fast and strong. Keridwen yelled, You won't get away like that! She turned herself into an otter and dived in after him. They swam through weeds and waves. Soon Keridwen's teeth were snapping at his tail. But at that moment he came to a waterfall. Guion leapt into the air. He became a swallow, flying swift and high. Keridwen yelled, You won't get away like that! She turned herself into a hawk, soared after him. They swooped through clouds and storms. Soon Keridwen's beak was snapping at his feathers, and this time he knew he was in trouble. He was out of breath too. What can I do now? he thought. He looked down and saw that he was flying over a farmyard. The farmer had been sifting the corn and all over the farmyard lay hundreds of tiny seeds of corn. That gave Guion an idea. He dropped down and turned himself into a seed of corn and lay there, hidden among the hundreds of others. She'll never find me here, he thought. Keridwen circled down and perched on the fence and looked at the farmyard with her sharp eyes. She was still angry and she wasn't going to give up now. She wanted to get her own back. She wanted her revenge. You won't get away like that either, she snapped. You're not the only one who's clever, little thief Guion. Keridwen hopped down among the corn. 
She turned herself into a black hen and she pecked up every seed of corn in the farmyard. Every single one. Then she went back to her castle in the lake and sat in her chair. Where's little Guion? Morvan asked. Dead, she said. I've eaten him. But that night, as the moon shone through the window, she felt a soft stirring inside her. And she wondered if he really was dead. Because, after all, now he was a bard, and a sorcerer, and a shapeshifter. Every month, as the moon grew and shrank, Keridwen knew that Gwion was still alive. He was growing inside her, a new baby. And she knew, at the end of nine months, he would be born. You won't get away like that. I'll deal with you once and for all. But when the baby was born, his face was so beautiful and so bright. She looked at him and found she wasn't sure about killing him anymore. She felt annoyed at herself. Well, I still have my revenge. She took a small leather bag and she put the baby inside. Then she took him to the river and threw the bag onto the water and watched it bob away. Goodbye, Thief Guion, she said. They went, she went back to the castle in the lake and sat in the chair. Where's little Guion? Morvan asked. Dead, she said. I've drowned him. But that night, as the moon shone in the river, there was a soft stirring inside the leather bag. And the bag floated gently on the surface, past forest and villages, down to the sea. The bag bobbed against a row of wooden poles called a weir, made to catch fish. And there it stopped. Now the king of the country was King Goithno, and his castle was nearby. Goithno had a son called Elfin. Everyone called him Prince Elfin the Unlucky, because nothing ever went right for him. Goithno said to his son, it's about time you had some luck. Go down to the weir. Every year, on May Eve, there's at least a hundred pounds worth of salmon caught in that weir. This year, you can have what you find there. Maybe it will change your life. Elfin was pleased. He kissed his wife, Anwen. Good luck, she said. He took his horse and rode down to the weir. When they got there, the sun was rising and the river rippled into the sea. But there was not a single fish in the weir. Not even one. Elfin looked up and down the river. The only thing he could see was a small leather bag bobbing against one of the wooden poles. Ha! You really are unlucky, Prince, one of the servants said. This fish trap always has fish in it. But this year there's nothing but an old bag someone's thrown away. Elfin got down from his horse. Well, I, I may as well see what's in it. Maybe it's something worth a hundred pounds. The servant laughed. Why bother? But Elfin took off his boots and walked out into the stream. The water was cold and it rushed against him. When he got to the bag... He grabbed it and held it high as he made his way back, soaked up to the waist. He opened the bag. And there, smiling at him, was a baby boy with the most lovely face he had ever seen, full of intelligence and beauty. The servant stared. What a bright face! Then, that's what we'll call him, Elfin said. His name will be Taliesin, which means bright face in Welsh. He climbed back up on his horse and put the boy in front of him. He rode very carefully back to his father's castle. 
but he was gloomy because he knew his father would be angry and there were no fish. He gave a great sigh. Then, at once to his amazement, the baby spoke. Don't be sad, Prince Elfin. Elfin stared. You could talk. More than that, Taliesin said. I'm a bard, and this here is my first song. Elfin had never heard such a sweet and clever song. Are you human? Elfin asked. Or are you a spirit out of the river? Taliesin laughed. What am I? He began to sing again. I was a thief of magic, chased by an angry hag. I fled as a hare. I swam as a salmon, I soared as a swallow, was a seed on the floor, nine months in darkness, sail away in a bag. I've been dead, I've been alive, once I was Gwion, now I'm Taliesin. Elfin couldn't wait to get home. He ran into the castle where his wife Anwen and his father, King Gwethnor, were waiting. Well... The king said, Have you brought your catch? This is my catch. Elfin laid the baby boy on the floor. What good is he? Goizno groaned. I'm more use than a few fish, Taliesin said softly. Goizno stared. He, he can talk, but, but he's just a baby. Elfin laughed. <laughs> he's Taliesin, and he's going to be our bard. He picked up the baby and gave him to his wife. And Anwen smiled down at the shining face. More than that, she said, he'll be just like our son. Taliesin grew up to be wise and clever. By the time he was thirteen, he could out-magic any sorcerer and out-sing any bard. Elfin and Anwen loved him dearly, and Elfin grew more rich, and no one called him unlucky any more. The end. I hope you enjoyed the extract from that book, The Magic Thief. It's one I love reading at schools, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Join me next time, next week, for another Sunday Story Time. Until then, bye for now.